Guys, I'm so sorry. I was on the wrong, I was on the wrong link. I was on by myself and I'm saying, where is everybody? And then Stephanie just said to me, if Stephanie didn't text me to say, where are, like, what's going on? I would have, I would have never known I was on the wrong link. <laughs> I was about oh, to text you, like, what meeting today? It was, you know. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what meeting is she on? <laughs> oh, it did say I was on another meeting? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I was on my own meeting. I was on my own okay. little meeting all by myself. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind today. <laughs> I was like, out of all days for no one to show up and there's snow coming and you know, all this other stuff that I'm just talking about to myself. And there so, you guys are all. Missy, do do I still do I still come in? No, no, we're going to leave at 12. Okay. Yeah, we're all leaving at 12. So me, okay. Solana, and um, Tabitha's here on phones this morning. We're leaving. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> oh my goodness tabitha never check it off night voicemail this whole morning she just no way. yeah she just <laughs> i can't so that was a great meeting this morning that was that awesome was so that was good beautiful that was yeah. so good. That yeah. was the best one I think he's ever done. Yeah, that was awesome. Since that I've been awesome. here anyway. Yeah. Well, that well, we've never done these before, right? We right. did. We would do one a year mm -hmm. um, for the but award. Like, I feel like he's getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that was a great, great, great meeting. So anyway, he's thank you guys. Ideas, isn't he? Huh? He's always, he's always full of great ideas. He's like, he never, you know, the way that you rethink things, you know? Yes. He's very, yes. He, he's always motivated, extremely, extremely motivated. And he thinks outside the box. And you know what I love, Missy? The way he was talking about the escalation clause to keep it there to secure your- As office. an insurance policy. I actually wrote well, that down, right? So I that. always like try to write things. I was trying to keep attendance of everybody who was there, right? That was one thing I was doing. And then I was trying to- write down uh you know points that i thought were very significant and that was i that was one of my points deb that i wrote yeah. down i, I like that i like the yeah i like the, the, the way he put it as an insurance policy always have it because anything insurance. could happen right because mm -hmm. you know even if you're like getting close to the closing table someone could swipe in right and you have all that. the time it happens all the time never would have thought of it that way because you only think of it at the point when you're making the offer you don't think of it as an afterthought Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, good, good idea. So that was a great meeting. So, um, so I'm going to mute everybody and then I'll get started. So unmute yourself if you want to speak to me. Okay, I think I did it. Okay, so good morning, guys. Hope you're all safe and sound in your homes. It's very cold out there and it's very cold in here. So be thankful <laughs> wherever you are right now if you're warm. Um, but I have another nice, uh, session planned for you guys. So thank you guys for again, committing and attending on the 10th day of real estate. My mentor coached to me to be of service and focus on helping others get what they want and you in turn get what you want. Okay. So it has to come from the heart. I spoke about that a little bit yesterday. So listen for the need and be aware of others, fears, challenges, and offer to help. So as not as to not bother the general public when prospecting for new business, top real estate agents always tie the reason they're contacting people in, excuse me, with providing some type of value at the same time, always come from a mindset of contribution. Now, the one thing I do know that everybody on this call, and I'm going to say 99% of my agents in this office all come from that mindset, all truly want to help people out. Like, I really don't know anyone who does it in our office anyway, who does not move forward that way, honestly. So, oops, oops. Okay, so I gotta keep moving your little faces around today. So do you care about getting your social media numbers up? Do you want people to love and adore you? The problem is you're focusing on the wrong things. Don't concentrate on yourself or what you want from other people. Instead, shift your focus to towards helping others and make an impact on those who already appreciate you. So how do you do that? That's by providing them information, guidance, uh, tips, right? 
So, you know, Lauren Ayaluzio has been doing a tip of the week on a Friday. Has anybody noticed that on Instagram, she's doing a live video and a tip. All right. So that's something that people really, you know, are interested in, especially in a market like this. Now, if social media is not your thing, I'm not asking you all to now put that into your plan coming up. But if it is something that you would be wanting to work on, think about it more in the mindset of how you can help other people. Whether there be other businesses in the area, right? Showcasing them, stores, um, you know, mom and pop shops, whatever it is, focus on helping someone else. What, and, and in turn, that will totally help you. So there's a new man in town in Randolph. Um, Brian, I can't remember his last name. He just started real estate this year. He joined Keller Williams and he was a Broadway, he was in Broadway shows before. So he's very theatrical is what I'm trying to say. So he started a Facebook group called Everybody Loves Randolph. Okay. So he's the one um, on top. And what he does is every week he goes to a place and he interviews them live. And then he plays the video. So last night I saw that he was um, going to, there's a house in Randolph. Many of you may know about it already that does like unbelievable Christmas lights, holiday lights for the season. And everybody goes by and drives by and they've been doing it for years. Well, so he went and actually got in touch with the seller or the sellers, they're not sellers, the uh, homeowners and asked them, you know, if he can interview them on what they do, how they do it, why they do it. So this is things he does. A few weeks ago, I saw he had posted one about the local mechanic shop on Sussex Turnpike. Everybody knows who Tari is, whether you, whether you bring your car there or not. Again, it's a fixture in our community. So again, these are things where he's focusing on other people and not focusing on himself. So again, just want to, you know, if this is something that you, is, you're interested in, then, you know, just start thinking about how you can do it to help others and focus on others and focus on helping people versus what, you know, you do every day and, you know, why people, you know, getting people to love you. So let's get into warm calling for a minute, right? When no one loves cold calling, cold calling is a bad word in our industry, right? It makes us all nervous and scared and sweat a lot and hide from me so that you don't have to give your numbers in. So warm calling is when you reach out to someone with whom you've had previous contact. They already, they're already in your CRM database, you know them, and more importantly, they remember being contacted by you. So this isn't necessarily a friend or family member, right? This is someone that you've touched, maybe, maybe you've met them and opened a house. You know, maybe they came in through Op City or Wicker the Network and you've chatted with them at least once, okay? It's someone who you've, you've contacted at least once in your life and now hopefully they're in your database and they're being nurtured on your behalf. So um, there's already a tiny spread of trust. With warm leads, you know they have a le least, at least a little bit of interest in working with you and you have useful data stored in your CRM or you should. That's the, part, that's the beauty of having a CRM like what type of property they were looking at online or whether they have kids, a dog, whatever it is, right? And that's the second part of warm calling. When you're reaching out to someone you've already connected with, you're able to provide more value. You could offer to show them more properties like the one they're interested in, let them know which neighborhoods have kid-friendly sidewalks, so on. A dog park, right? That's huge. If someone is, has, is a pet person, you want to, you know, you want to let them know, guess what? This town has a great um, dog park. And a lot of, you know, things that, you know, a, a nice pet friendly community. So warm calling is less intrusive and it feels way more genuine and human. So again, just tech, when you're, when you're reaching out to these warm calls, these people that you may have touched once in your life, remember to, to hopefully put in good notes, right? So that you remember a little bit about them. And then also make sure that you are providing them with more value, you know, something that you've spoke about in the past. So again, it's a nicer, easier call to make. So to be successful, focus on helping others. Success is not as hard as you think. We, we overcomplicate things. It's just human nature to overcomplicate everything, but it's really just about building relationships and focusing on helping others. So when that happens, more people will appreciate you. You'll make their lives magical and the, su the success and admiration will come later. For example, when Oprah Winfrey comes on stage, right? 
She doesn't say, hey, everybody, look at me. I'm the best. Look what I've created out of nothing. Look where I came from, right? That's not what she's saying to everybody. She puts focus on her audience. She zooms in on others and does what she can help. Uh, she can to help everyone around her, right? That's how she's become the icon that she is today. She's always focused on helping others, right? Always help, always, 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 whether it's a charity that she gave, um, you know, to, um, and, or just helping people that can, that come on the show. So think about that when you are moving forward in your daily life. So five real estate customer service strategies you can focus on now. Listen and prioritize. So that's, again, another thing we, we seem to forget is not to talk so much, but to listen more. So not all clients are the same, especially when it comes to buyers. Take time to listen intently to what they're looking for in a new home and determine what are the must-haves, nice to-haves, and can't-haves, if any. Not only will this help Will, will this will help you narrow down potential properties for your client, but the client will feel acknowledged when their voice is heard and put at the forefront of the search process. That being said, you may also have clients that don't have a clear vision of what they want. Asking more questions on their personal preferences, their lifestyles, and their values can help you provide customized recommendations and examples to your clients. Always use examples of experience you've had with other clients. It makes it a little bit more relevant to them, right? This also reinforces the feeling that you are expressly there for them and their needs and are keeping their best interests in mind, right? We never want them to feel that we don't have their best interests at mind at 100% at all times. So um, everybody, and if you haven't had this opportunity yet, it will happen to you when you're working with the buyer and you continue to put offers in on homes and in a market like this, they'd say, oh no, I understand it's at 350 and I understand we're in a, a really active market, but I want to go in at 275, right? We've all had those person. And we're like, no, 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 we can't. Like getting a great deal today is getting it at asking price if you could even do that. They're like, um, no, no, it's not worth 350 to me. And so you spin your wheels, spin your wheels. And then the more times that you put an offer for them or the more times that you take that client out, the more you don't want to detach yourself from them because now you're like, oh, I put in so much time. I know the next person that, that they go with is going to, you know, they're going to end up getting the first house. I know it's, you know, right around the corner. So we continue to spin our wheels with someone. And why is that? Because we never found out their motivation from the beginning. If we knew their motivation, then we would be able to help them make the right decision. Maybe it's not the right time for them to buy a house then. Maybe they shouldn't be going and seeing homes and putting in low ball offers on every home because really they're not ready yet, you know? So we have to be more clear, uh, get a more clear vision of what they want, what their motivation is by asking them as many questions as possible and then just sitting back and listening to what they have to say. So own your expertise. This is huge, right? This is really one of the hugest things for me anyway. Um, there we go. Remember, you are the expert here. Your clients will come to you with a wide range of comfort levels and knowledge regarding the real estate business and how it works. But most of their information will be anecdotal. So remember, everybody is a real estate expert, right? Because they can go online and they can go on Zillow and they can go on all these websites and find out all the information. So the clients come to us believing that they have just as much information as we do, that they can basically take themselves through the process, but somehow, you know, we have to let them in the house, right? So that's where they need us. So we have to be more proactive in owning our expertise and what we bring to the table. We know how complex a transaction is. It's unbelievably challenging. We know that. We deal with it every day. So we have to make sure that knowing how, what the value we're going to bring to them, that we're going to really make sure that we take control of the situation and of that client. So you understand the market, its tendencies and trends more than most, regardless of how much time a client spends browsing listings online. Your experience is an invaluable resource and sharing your insight is customer service at its finest. Even if a client is familiar with the area, they will need expert guidance on the logistical side of things like handling negotiations, navigating through the piles of contracts and paperwork, and avoiding any potential pitfalls that may present themselves. If you haven't already started building up your network of trusted resources who may be able to help your client, such as lenders, inspectors, contractors, cleaning service, painters, painters and more. And this is the part where it really, um, you know, 
perplexes me that a new agent can come in and take control of the, the, the um, transaction because we've told them and this is what they've learned. So this is all they know, right? They don't know anything else yet. They haven't been beaten down yet by the uh, clients and the public and the buyers and sellers. So at this point, if we tell them what to do, if we're guiding them, they're trusting us that we're going to get them, you know, through the process and they listen to what we say. So they are saying, no, you have to meet with my lender. No, you have to use my inspector. No, I'm going to be your one-stop shop. I Come to me. I want to be your one point of reference if you need a contractor, a painter, all these things. But you want to be that one stop for them for everything because that's part of your valuable resource that you're providing to them, that they don't have to go out and start, you know, um, uh, interviewing people and vetting people out, right? You want to be that. So be more, um, take more control of your business because you are the expert. You are, you are going to get them through the transaction. They would never be able to get through it without you. So make sure that you remember that. So communication, this is huge. I spoke to someone yesterday in reference to this. So, um, one of the best ways to deliver a great customer service is through consistent and ongoing communication with your clients. In the thick of things, you may be reaching out to them several times a day. So it's best to understand and respect both how, phone, text, email, et cetera, they wanna be contacted and when they wanna be contacted, okay? How they wanna be contacted may vary depending on the time of day as well, depending on if they work full time and aren't always available to chat between specific hours. Again, the more communication you have and say, listen, I'm going to give you 100% of personal attention at all times. You know, I communicate via phone, text, email. What's your preference in communication? I want to make sure that we're on the same page. Is there any times that work better for you than don't? Because I want to make sure I respect your time. Okay, these are, that's a, a very, you know, simple question to ask anybody and you should know that. So effective communication with clients can be a bit of balancing act of ensuring that your client is informed, but also has the right direction and guidance to act on whatever decisions need to be made at the time. When appropriate, you should provide recommendations based on your experience. If the ball is more in your court, communicate regularly on the work you are doing and the process that is being made. Being proactive and providing, it custom, providing customized attention to your clients demonstrates your willingness to go above and beyond. So I was talking to an agent yesterday because they are so communicative with their client, okay? And I said, I have to really um, reward you in the fact that most agents, I can tell you based on when I talk to them, when they get into a sticky situation with their client, they shut down from their client. They don't want to talk to them. Their phone rings, they look at it, they go, oh God, I can't deal with this person now. I'm going to, and they, you know, they, they push it off till later. But that is not the way we need. We need to be in constant communication with our client. Because what happens when we're not in constant communication with our client? They start asking other people for their advice, right? Because they want an answer, right? Everybody wants an instantaneous gratification on what they want to know or what they need to know. So now they're going to start going to other people. And then now you have not only their uh, opinion to deal with, but now you have other people's opinions to deal with. It could be someone who's in real estate, right? Someone that they didn't choose for some reason. And now they're using them as an advocate against you. You know, so you have to make sure you always stay in communication with your client. I don't care how horrible they are. I don't care how much they yell at you. I don't care how disrespectful they are. It's their emotions that are driving them to that. And you need to be there to make sure everything stays on track. So that's really, really huge. I'm moving you guys again. Show that you care, okay? So for our clients, most real estate transactions carry some emotional significance. We would say a lot, right? It, shows, it carries a whole lot of emotional significance. Buying or selling a home is a milestone moment that you as a real estate agent have guided them through. Be sure to take a step back from the business side of things to embrace the celebration of being done with the process, okay? A personal gesture to show gratitude for your client goes a long way and closes this phase of your relationship on a high note. So some ideas are a thank you card, wish them well with a handwritten card that thanks them for their business and congratulates them on their new home or sale. Closing gift, always remember to think of something that you know reminds you of them during the process. Get them something to remember you by. This could be something they need for the house or simply a bottle of champagne. Again, don't overthink it. It's just a gesture to say, Hey, thank you so much for the opportunity of working with me. 
You know, I know you could have chosen anyone and I'm so honored that you chose me to, to take you through one, this process. It is, it is such an amazing um, thing that you've done that. So make sure that they know that you are so appreciative of that, okay? Drop buys with small gifts during the year, such as plants, pumpkin pies, etc. Just to say again, hey, I'm thinking of you and I'm so appreciative that, you know, we have this relationship now. You know, you have to stay on top of these clients. These are your pure gold. That's why we call it pure gold. This is your gold. This is what you've mined for. And when you are able to convert one and get one over, it is such a big, big, important thing. So make sure that you um, don't forget that. Don't take that them for granted for a second, okay? I don't care how difficult they were. I don't care. I don't care. Believe me, I get beaten up on a daily basis. I used to get be beaten up for my eight uh, clients and I get beaten up by my associates but I understand at the time that they're they're lashing out it's because something emotional is happening to them and they need help right it's the same thing you know they can be your best advocates the ones the hardest ones are usually your best advocates so don't forget them and honestly just take a step back and say you know that was awful transaction but I'm going to make sure I stay in touch with them because yes they gave me an opportunity and I'm so grateful for that so staying in touch, staying in touch, since the real estate business is built on foundation of solid relationships, the customer service shouldn't end when the transaction is finished. Instead, you should find opportunities to stay top of mind with your former clients and be available to them as a resource should they ever want to sell or update their home or explore the market's available inventory at any given time. We talked about that last week. Make sure they're getting a market report, okay? Whether it's monthly, every two months, quarterly, Talk to them. Say, I want to be able to keep you up to date with your mar with your market area. And that you bought this big investment, you know, how often do you want to receive a report? Once a month? Every two months? It's a nice call to make right now. If you, if you don't have them set up and you want to catch up with them, say, I have this new um, system that I'm using or this new, you know, uh, value that I'm sending out to my clients. Um, I just want to make sure you, you're able to take advantage of it too. It's called a market report. And it keeps you up to date with your local market. How often would you want to receive one of these? And again, it's a nice call to make. We're talking about friendly, warm calls. We're not talking about harsh, cold calls. Consider birthday or anniversary of your client's transaction a great time to get back in touch if it has been a while since you last talked. Again, it's so nice that you know we have the pure gold um, where we're providing you with an anniversary card every year that we put in your mailbox. It's already... Um, has a postage on it. It's already has their information on it. And you're just writing a nice handwritten note to them every year to, to again. And, and that's a nice reminder to give them a call, right? Or drop by their house with that card, whatever the case may be. Do your best to get a sense of how they're enjoying their new home. If there have been any major life changes for them, like getting married or having kids and assess if their housing needs are changing in any way. You know, you sell them a two bedroom house two years ago when they were, you know, just getting married and now they have two kids and a third one on the way, you know, that might be a, 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 um, a, a reason to call and make sure that, you know, this is a, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities in today's market and keep them up to date with what's going on with their house. This personal connection is of the utmost importance for being trusted source for their real estate needs whenever they're ready to get started again. You want to be on top of mind. You want to be on top of mind. So in conclusion, a good real estate agent must be fully committed to serving the customers in ways that are uniquely beneficial to them. Getting to know your clients on a personal level, responding directly to their needs, and anticipating ways to make their life easier while working with you will always leave a lasting impression. Implement one of these services into your daily practice as a commitment to being the exception and going above and beyond for your clients moving forward. So when I share this with you, go through it again, and, and or maybe you've already written down something. Maybe you're like me, and I always like to say, these are my you know takeaways, and so I'm always writing notes down. If you've had a takeaway or two, implement that into your business and make sure that you are uh, the exception right? You don't want to be the average agent. You want to be the exceptional agent in our industry, in our business, because you will go a lot further that way. We all saw those awards today. We all saw some great numbers there. Everybody has that same opportunity to get there. Everybody does here. 
you know, we had an amazing year and we can have, even have a better one if you make these commitments to yourself and to your clients moving forward. So again, I thank you guys for joining. I thank you guys for your commitment. I truly, truly, you don't know how much it means to me to see you guys here every single day. Um, I know, you know, I know how many things come in your way every day. I know how you get bombarded. I truly understand it. And so that's why I truly appreciate it. And I truly appreciate every one of you. We have two days left and I am starting this um, session over on my Wednesday night um, training. So tonight will be week one and I'm going to be doing the CRM one again. So if anybody wants to revisit anything, please feel free. Um, but um, it, it, does anyone want to add anything that they do? Um, that has worked out for them that, you know, clients have really appreciated that they can share with everybody. You guys are too. I, I can say some, I can say something okay. um, on a marketing, on the marketing standpoint. Um, just real quick on the sales standpoint, I was in sales years ago for um, a, a human resource firm. Um, and the, and the product we were selling was very complex and difficult to explain to people. So I liked that my boss took me under his wing and he kind of, you know, told me to tell them the simplest, the simplest things about it. Um, and, you know, speak in layman's terms. And I liked that he, you know, kind of taught me to not really sell, but just to tell, um, and, you know, I think that in our business too, it, it is difficult to go into great, great detail on the first call. Um, so I just think that, you know, simple is better uh, to start out. So a lot of people just don't understand things, you know, and interest rates, they don't, a lot of people, I, I don't understand interest rates, you know? So I think that, um, you know, simple is, is the best thing to do. And the second thing that he taught me, and I think I mentioned this a couple of, a uh, couple of sessions ago was just the listening part that Missy just mentioned. Like, I just think that, you know, consumers want you to listen to their problems and to what, you know, what their issues are. And I think that that goes a long way of being just kind of a consultant to them and a friend to them, you know, versus a salesperson. I think that that's just a, such Absolutely. a good piece of advice that Missy just gave and I've had it before in my past. So I just think, you know, everybody can take something from that. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. And that, and it is something I say all the time. When you're talking to these clients, talk to them like your friend, like your mother, like your sister, like your brother, like someone you care about. That's how you should be talking to them, right? Not like a robot. Hi, my name is Deb Reagan. I'm from Wicker Realtors, and I want to know if you want to sell your home. Now, this is not what Deb does. I just saw her face out there, so I decided to use her name. But, <laughs> but right, that's what we sound like, and it's not natural. I don't know why the unnaturalness comes out of all of us. So again, while we're waiting for them to answer the phone or when they're telling us no or why not, we, you know, we had a manager talk. If anybody was on the um, call session last night, the company-wide call session, um, one of the managers called a for sale by owner on um, Zillow. And they, they said, no, they were not interested. And her dialogue was so amazing. And she got the appointment to get in. She basically said, oh, okay, so you're comfortable with all the negotiations and all the complexities that are due with, um, you know, that go along with selling your house on their own? He's like, well, what are you talking about? And, you know, like, and then she said, well, you know, like, you know, just letting people in and not knowing if they're um, properly qualified to buy your home, you know. Uh, once it comes, once you do find a qualified buyer and you go into contract and they come in to do a home inspection, you know, are you prepared for what things may come forward and what, you know, and so she just kept going. And so before you knew it, he was like, okay, when can you come? But he started out really gruff. He started out like, like, I don't need you. Like, why are you calling me? Like, do you have a buyer? If not, don't bother me. And she was just like, listen, I, I'm just want, I'm just going to help you. Like, do, do you know the complexities of, of selling your own home? I just want to, I'm just, you know, I just truly want to know. I'm just truly, you know, and because she was just the way she approached him, he was open to having that conversation. So again, that doesn't come from, you know, I don't expect anybody on this call to call and be able to talk that fluently today. But if you're doing your one call a day, and if you're consistently doing that, 
by next year, you're going to be really fluent with what you say and what you do, because you're going to have hit so many objections by then. You're going to have taught yourself what to say and what to do and not to give up. So it's all practice. It's all consistency and it's all commitment. And you all can do it. So make sure you guys are making your one call a day. Huge, huge. It's going to change your lives and your business. So don't forget. I'm going to keep reminding you that. <clears throat> So, um, I know you need to go, Missy, but um, <laughs> yes. um, that show you care. So, after I left the office yesterday and we dropped those packages off, mm -hmm. um, I have one lady that reached out to me and she wants to sell her home and buy a home. But I had to reach out to Anthony, and Anthony told her she, there were some things that she needed to fix on her credit first. And so, they've been in touch. Um, so, I dropped it off to her. She lives here in Wharton. And so she texted me and said, thank you so, so much for the gift. She really appreciated it. And then she asked me how I liked Wharton. And I told her how much I loved it, especially my neighbors. And she said, yeah, I want to live in that neighborhood. I really want to be in Sterling Heights. And I said, well, my neighbors next door, they want to sell because he hates the loud noise behind him. And I said, the noise is actually not bad. He's just old and he has a disciple or decibel reader. <laughs> because he just hates the noise here and she started laughing she goes keep me in mind I said I definitely will and I said you still been in touch with Anthony right she goes oh definitely I'm doing everything he's been telling me to do so you know there's one right there just that little gift made made it you know made absolutely. an impression absolutely. so it that was great dialogue the only thing I'm going to uh, um, request from here on don't tell them who your who the person is that wants to sell Oh, I won't. Oh, well, yeah. like, like, don't trust that they won't go and put in, you know, like go and knock on their door and say, I heard you want to sell. Do you want to make a deal? Like, that's yeah. my only fear. I just said it's one of the neighbors on the street. Yeah, oh, perfect, perfect. He doesn't know which one. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that's all I you can say. I, I, I know someone's say thinking of selling. Door. Yes, I know someone's thinking of selling. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I just want to make sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And, I, and I'm so happy to hear that you have started, sent, you know, dropping gifts off and doing those things. From the day that we had that session, she did that. She saw something on Facebook. She responded to them on Facebook. It was someone, one of her clients or, um, you know, potential clients, kid's birthday. And then she dropped something off in their mailbox. And they were like so thankful for that. So again, it's these little gestures, little gestures that make a lot. And really, I want to say one more thing. I'm sorry. I, I hate going over, but I really want to mention something because I thought about it today and I didn't put it in here. So yesterday I ordered this new hair color for Madison Reed. Okay, I hear it on my podcast all the time. It's supposed to be multidimensional, blah, 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 blah. So I went home from my, to my daughter because I haven't been going to the salon. And I went home to my daughter and I said, I ordered this thing. And she said, mom, I told you they have bad reviews online. Okay, because what I'm trying to say to you is I don't look at reviews online, obviously. I don't have time for that. But sh that age group, go, moving up to the 30s, they look at everything online. Up to like 40, they don't do a thing without checking reviews over and over and over again. So what I'm trying to say is ask for your reviews right away. Do not wait because it's really, really important today to have reviews and testimonies to share with people because they want to see it. Okay. This group that's coming up, this group that's buying a lot of houses now, this, this, you know, these first time home buyers and second time home buyers moving up, they always want to. So, um, you know, and just to bring this up and I, and again, I don't like to bring in, you know, personal things, but my husband gets a review basically every time he does an inspection. And you know why? Because he asks them at the end when they're happy. He doesn't ask them three days later when they're negotiating home inspection reviews or whatever the case may be. He asks them then after they're finished, they have a good relationship and says, can you please go on and do this? You know, I really appreciate it. And, and they do it right that night because these, again, that's the way their mindset is. They live by reviews and they give reviews. So if there's something not good, so we ordered from a, a place a few weeks ago and the sandwiches were horrible. My daughter's like, I'm going on and I'm, put, I'm putting it down. That was, you know, that's how they live their lives, guys, right? So think about that. I just want you to think about that again, that there's a, the age group that maybe it's not the way we move forward. I never look at reviews. I just go and then I figure it out. And if I'm unhappy, nobody knows but me and maybe a few people that talk to me the next day. Everything they do is, is, has, is reviews, 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 reviews. So make sure that you're asking for it at the beginning, when they're happy, when you start the relationship, when things are going good, before they even buy a house. It did, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be at the, you know, during the transaction or when things are going crazy. When you build a relationship with them and you get that comfortability with them, ask them for a review. 
get it done. So this way you get more reviews, okay? Um, I really want everybody to focus on that as well, like just getting more reviews because that's that's where everybody's looking today. You know, they're going on. And if you don't have a review, you don't exist in their world, basically. No matter what a great agent you are, no matter how good you do, no matter how satisfied your clients are at the end, if they can't read that, it doesn't exist. So I just say something, I have a follow up. I, had, I agree with you 100%. And I remember you mentioned this in one of our um, meetings that sometimes, you know, your clients kind of like um, either they forget or they don't get around to it. They're just so wrapped up in their transaction. So mm -hmm. I prepared like a review and I had them look at it and sign off on it. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's a good way of doing it as well, because some people are not very good at writing those sorts of things. And if they're not good writers, do you know what I mean? So I just right. prepared for them and said, okay, do you agree with this? Okay, fantastic. Just initial there. You know what I mean? The only thing is you can't really put it on Zillow, but I'm kind of like, I'm not a fan of Zillow. So I'd rather put those reviews on my website. Yeah, put them on your website. Absolutely. Put them on Realtor.com even. You know, Realtor.com has really been moving up in the world. You know, I've heard from a lot of agents. So, you know, there's other platforms. Make sure you have a Google business account and, and it can go right on there. It should be going into everything. You know, like these are the, the places that people are looking. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, you know, I was going to ask you that, uh, Missy. What is a platform of choice to ask them for to to make an input of a review? Is it Google or for for real estate agents? I would say Google Business if you have a Google Business account or Zillow. I would say because a lot of people do like Zillow, even though we're not Zillow fans. Because the beauty of it is, if they do it on Zillow, you can copy and paste it now and put it in your website. And I think it actually. Um, yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, you can yeah. connect them directly. Yes, yeah, so you can connect them. If they do Zillow, it goes right on your website mm -hmm. automatically. And then you can so, put them on Google. You can put them on Google. Like you can put them on different places. So I would say either Realtor.com or Zillow. Make that the platform that they uh, post the um, testimonial to, and then copy and paste it and put it in different places from there. Do we need to create an account in Zillow uh, before? Every agent should have an account. There's a, you have a free account and everybody should have one. But Missy, on mine, I've, I've had a Zillow account forever to, to look at homes and it will not let me change to a professional account. I have tried four or five times. Uh, we'll have to look into that. I'm not sure why, because I have a professional, you know, I don't, obviously I know a lot of people don't pay, but they have their professional account. You should have one and they should allow you to as an agent. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure the consumer and the real estate agent are two different interfaces, Lori, but let me look into it because there is, I don't think you can as a consumer create a real estate agent profile. I tried to switch it over and it won't let me. Every time I sign out or try to delete the app and add it back in, it adds me back in as my consumer. Okay. Yeah. So you need, I think you need to start it with a different email address. Okay. Use a different, use your uh, wife's yeah, email. Yeah. It, it, they, it is um, through email address. Okay. Yeah. So anyone else have anything else to add? Missy, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I got an email uh, from realtor.com for professionals and it says, get your recent, uh, get your feedback from your clients. Who sent me this and how do I send it to my client? Do I email her that thing? So it's like the whole you don't email. want to email them that. You want to email them a link that takes them to your profile. So you have to go into Zillow or into Realtor.com, into your profile there. You get it. You should. You should all have a profile in there. You have to go in and do it yourself, but it's a free, you know, service that they provide as a real estate agent professional that you have a, um, you have your own profile. When you but it's a there, link. It's in the email. It's giving me a link, and it, then you have to go there and it says terms and conditions, and you have to confirm and continue. So do um, I send them that link? No, 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 no. no. I, I, do you know where that link's going? Is that link going to you? Like if you don't know where a link is going, do not share it with them. Make sure you're going onto your profile. You'll find a link in there for testimonials. And if anybody needs help, I can walk them through it, you know, one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. And then you sent an email saying, hi, as a professional in the industry, you know, I get referral, you know, through five, five star ratings or whatever. I have, I have something already written. I'm just going to throw something. Yeah, right then now. we'll do it together one day. I can't remember it word for word. So, um, you know, it really helps my business. So can you please click on the link below and provide me with, you know, the ex your experience with me and so that, that link should go right to your profile and then they put it in and then that's on your profile. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, yeah. I'll show it to you. We'll do it together. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else? Yeah, can I just share something really funny? As I was, you know, as you we were wrapping up, I just got like, I always get these LinkedIn notifications. And I thought this was just so perfect for what we're going to do tomorrow. It says rejection doesn't mean you aren't good enough. It just means that the other person failed to realize what you have to offer. So on that note, when we're making our calls tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning or at 1030 tomorrow morning, keep that in mind. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yep. So thank you. That was a great one. I love those little uh, quotes. So um, guys, I'm going to head out just because it hasn't started yet here, but I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to snow. I'm you, mean a you, didn't pack, you didn't pack your cot, Missy. I thought you were spending the night. <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. No. No, I don't like snow and ice in, when I'm operating a car. <laughs> Those two things spell danger in my mind. <laughs> well, get home safe. All right. All right. And I'll talk to you guys uh, later. It's snowing okay. now. It's snowing now. Oh, it's Bye. Snowing now. All right. All right. I have, to, I have things to do. Be safe, everyone. Thank you. All right. Take yes, care. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.